Back when I still used Mac, I had some brief moments of entertainment when I found out that there was a text adventure built into Terminal. The text adventure in question is called Done It. It doesn't actually come as part of Terminal, it's included with GNU Emacs, which is a terminal based text editor, and that in itself is included with macOS. Linux and macOS systems usually include Emacs, I mean, probably. There's about a million Linux distros, so I can't really be sure. I'm on Windows right now though, so I'll install Emacs using Microsoft PowerShell. To do this, we need to firstly open PowerShell as an administrator. Then we can run this command to install Chocolatey. It's pretty self-explanatory, so I won't really bother to explain it. Now we have Chocolatey, we can use it to install Emacs. And finally, we can open up Emacs and use it as a text editor. If we wanted to anyway. I usually just use Notepad instead. Since Dunnet is included with Emacs, and we now have Emacs installed, we're ready to play the game. Type in Emacs-batch-l Dunnet. And here it is. You find yourself at a dead end of dirt road with only a shovel here. Take shovel. Taken. Eat shovel. You forcibly shove a shovel down your throat and start choking. You are dead. Well, I think that went well. I lost in 1.55 seconds. We'll go submit this to the death running subreddit. To be perfectly honest, I was struggling with motivation to play this. Text adventures are a fairly dead genre now. Or at least it's a very niche genre. And it will soon become clear that to an average computer user, Dunnit will prove to be quite a challenging game to complete. But this video isn't going to make itself, so I did end up playing it. I'm armed with notepad to draw a primitive map and keep notes. Back in the day, you'd probably just do this on a sheet of paper. So we start on a dirt road heading to the east. There's some royal palm trees, which aren't really relevant to the game, and there's a shovel. So instead of eating the shovel, we'll take the shovel this time. We follow the road and we'll find some soft ground to dig. And if we dig on the ground, we can pick up a CPU. Pick up CPU card. I don't understand that. Okay, fine. Take CPU? Eat CPU. You forcefully shove a computer board down your throat and start choking. You are dead. The road splits and we can head to a building which requires a key to enter. We don't have a key, so we'll head the other way. We find some bad smelling meat. I'm guessing eating that probably results in you choking and dying. Let's be fair here, making a text interpreter is a pretty difficult challenge. And I imagine especially so in 1982. So let's forgive the following. Inspect food. I don't understand that. Take meat. I don't know what that is. Pick up meat. I don't understand that. Take food? Taken. Okay. Anyway, we use the food to avoid being devoured by a ferocious bear. And the bear drops a key on the floor. I wonder what this key could possibly be for. Let's head back to the building. Use key. I don't understand that. Use brass key? I don't understand that. Open building? I don't understand that. Enter building. Okay. Alright, fine, if I'd have actually read the instructions, I would have known that the player will auto-unlock any doors that are unlockable. In the hallways of the building, there's a few rooms, some of which we can enter, and one which we can't. That locked room will become relevant much later in the game, but for now we enter the mail room and have more frustration with the text interpreter. Look in bin. I don't understand that. Okay, how about... Look bin? Well, that worked. Anyway, there's some names here. Let's write them down. In the room opposite the mailroom, we found a VAX 11 780. These were, at the time, 32-bit supercomputers. They were absolutely huge. To get the computer working, we have to pop in the CPU we dug up, and it springs to life. And now I'm stuck. We did a username and password, and the only information I have to go by is the names found in the mailroom. So perhaps we'll have to use some combination of those names. For some obtuse reason, it turns out we have to use the surname as the username, and the first name as the password. Also, it's case sensitive, so make sure you don't capitalise any names. It's at this point that the game goes from a straightforward adventure game into a Unix prompt. Literally, a Unix prompt. In the words of the Dunnitz creator, you're using a restricted Bourne shell. If you've never used Unix, 
and don't have any idea what that means, you probably aren't going to enjoy Dunnet very much. This actually only ends up being a small part of the game, but it does prove to be a massive roadblock for the un uninitiated. There's a few little hints though. It says our TCP IP link to the Gamma is a little flaky but seems to work. Gamma is another computer. FTP can only send files from your home directory, so you probably need to use that to send things to Gamma. There's a file called paper.o.z, which we can uncompress, and magically this gets put in our real world inventory. Exiting the console allows us to look at the paper. It says, type help for help. Well actually I already did that and it said help not found, so thanks. He also gives a very important word, worms. The guide I'm using tells us to FTP Gamma using the login anonymous, which I don't know how I'm supposed to know. According to developer Ron Schnell, this is the most common username for FTP. The guide also says that the password is worms, but the password isn't required. Apparently we can just type in literally anything and it'll let us in. At this point, the guide makes it clear that I missed some things. I'm not very far into the game, so let's restart and fill in what I missed. So we're supposed to look at some things for clues. Here's some potentially very important things that I missed. The shovel has a price tag attached, and we find that it cost $19.99. The CPU has 2 megabytes of RAM on board. And finally, we have to get a bracelet. But I looked everywhere. Where could this bracelet be? Well, we'll find out. Right now. Back to where we were. I'm messing around in the file system a little bit. And this computer is in fact running the Dunnit universe. By navigating the file system, we can find each room, including one called Hidden Area. Cat, it turns out, is nothing to do with the animal. It's actually the command we use to open text files. So by navigating through the file system, we can go to a folder named after a room. We can type cat's description, and that opens the description of the area. And this is how we find out where the bracelet is. So according to this description, we need to head southwest from the bear den, and we'll be able to pick up the emerald bracelet. Trying to read .o files using the cat command results in an error, because, for example, lamp.o is not an ASCII file. It's an object file, and object files obviously contain binary data. We're going to send our inventory items to Gamma using FTP, because if we don't, they'll be vaporised or something, I think. We have to set type to binary by typing type binary. If you do not do this, we send binary files as ASCII and they get corrupted. Very cool. Now we can use the rlogging command to transfer ourselves to Gamma. I sent the piece of paper as the incorrect file type to see what would happen. We receive a worthless pile of protoplasm as a result. Once we've transferred ourselves to Gamma, we find ourselves in a round stone room called the Receiving Room. Presumably since we can't take any items, we also turn up here naked. Well, we can make the most of this situation by heading to this conveniently located sauna. Let's turn it up. More. More. More! As the dial clicks into place, you immediately burst into flames. You are dead. Obviously we have to try something else, so I went to a weight room. Went down hole, dropped my items in order to be able to pick up this £10 weight that was lying around, and then went up hole again. I dropped the lamp at the bottom of the hole, so now the weight room is pitch dark. You trip over a groove and fall into a pit and break every bone in your body. You are dead. Because of course that happened. A groove, in case you are wondering, is a fictional monster. This monster also appeared in Zork, which is possibly the most well-known text adventure ever made. Also, I found out you can write take life preserver er evreg for sag sag It's still interpreted correctly. Use wait with button though. I don't understand that. Anyway, now we're in a maze, so we have to try every possible direction to see where to go, including up or down. That is north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west, northwest, up and down. So a total of 10 directions. This is horribly confusing. The description of the room slightly changes each time, but if we're revisiting a room we've already been to, it simply says maze, requiring you to type look every time. So much fun. 
Some of the treasures you have to find are so obtuse. One must head into the sauna with a wax statuette found in the maze and turn the dial up in order to melt the wax and reveal a diamond. Anyway, after much more adventuring, we find a treasure chute which allows us to score points. By dropping treasures we've collected into the chute, we'll get 10 points for each treasure. More adventuring leads to more treasure and eventually a PC which we can insert a floppy disk into. And here's an MS-DOS prompt. This is a bit more familiar to me, although apparently I didn't know how to read a .txt file in a command prompt until just now. So when I was saying some of the puzzles are obtuse, here's something I never would have thought of. We find ourselves in a bathroom built for workers in a cave. There's a urinal hanging on the wall, and some exposed pipe on the opposite wall where a sink used to be. In our inventory, we have a gold bar and a platinum bar. What could we possibly do with these? Well, of course, put gold in urinal, you hear it plop down in some water below. Put platinum in urinal, you hear it plop down in some water below. Flush urinal. Whoosh! And we just got 20 points. Obviously. Eventually we need a combination code to enter a room, which fortunately we found using the MS-DOS command prompt. This leads to the Gamma Computing Center. Here we break the Ethernet cable with an axe that we found, which closes the connection to Gamma and sends us back to our Unix prompt. And just like that, we're back in the start area of the game. In this room, we find the key that the bear originally dropped. So a few things happened. Earlier we put a key into a box which claimed it would upgrade our key. The key then disappeared. And we just found out where it disappeared to. In the first area of the game, there was that single door that was locked and we couldn't get through it. With the upgraded key, we're now allowed through that door. All hell breaks loose here and you end up in a huge maze of streets and intersections. We ride a bus for some reason, we blow up a street, we fall down a hole, we ride a train, we deposit our treasures, and then at the end of the game, I found out I missed a treasure at some point and only have 80 out of 90 points and I can't actually beat the game. Well, shit. Guess I can't show you the ending after all. Dunnit is absolutely monstrously huge. Some puzzles feel smart and rewarding to solve, and some are just stupidly obscure and I'll probably just really annoy you when you find out how to actually do them. But honestly, this is what I find is the case with a lot of modern point and click adventure games. Maybe they're not so different from their command line based predecessors after all. Anyway, there we have it. Done it. Made in 1983 and shipped with Emacs since 1994. Quite possibly the most widely distributed game of all time, and one that a lot of people probably don't even realise they have. The name Dunnit is allegedly derived from combining the words Dungeon and ARPANET. ARPANET was basically the pre-internet, so I guess this means this game is actually supposed to be pronounced Dunnet, rather than Dunnet. Developer Ron Schnell has a nice little website with various interesting facts about himself. He's been using ARPANET since 1979, which eventually was used as the technological basis for the internet, so he's a true internet for veteran. He's also known for watching every single episode of Saturday Night Live until 2021, and eating a lot of cheese. He plays Segway Polo, which is apparently a thing, and here's a photo of him doing that. There's also some information about a dead programming language called Art Speak here, which Ron has rewritten based on only the manual, because it's completely lost. It's now available to use online, and it's also now on my list of obscure, interesting things to talk about at some point. Even though Dunnit is tucked away in Terminal, it remains quite a popular novelty, and Ron claims to get fan mail about it almost every day. Hello. If you're still watching this, that probably means you enjoyed this video. You'll probably like my other videos too, and maybe even videos I haven't even made yet. So please consider subscribing and clicking the thumbs up button, and maybe even check out another video I've made.